Hey, how's it going guys? In this video, we're going to be doing a series of tests on my Mac Mini 2011 2.7 gigahertz. I'll have the specs at the bottom. We're going to be performing four different tests. Test number one will be a simple boot up and shutdown test. Test number two will be converting a file. And test number three will be a basic iMovie test. And test number four will be the benchmarks. All right, let's get started. Test number one will be the boot up and shutdown test. Let's see how fast the system is able to boot up and shut down completely. All right, let's get started. So the system was able to boot up in a minute and six seconds. Not bad. Now let's move on to the shutdown. So the system took 13 seconds to shut down completely. All right, let's move on to the next test. In test number two, we're going to be converting a file using any video converter. Um, the movie file is 18, 818 megabytes. It's about an hour and 21 minutes in length. It was a DVD ripped using Handbrake. Now we're going to convert this file into Apple TV 720p. And let's see how fast it's able to convert the video. Alright guys, so in test number three, things are going to get a little more interesting. We have an iPhone 4, a one minute clip that that was imported into iMovie and we had a transition, some color correction and some titles and we're going to be exporting using 720p and we also have ScreenFlow running at the same time but you guys will get to see the performance of iMovie. Keep in mind that iMovie is a 32-bit application and it does not take advantage of the system entirely but you guys will get an idea of the performance and how well the Mac Mini handles video, etc. All right, guys, let's get started. For test number four, this might be the most important test for most people. We're going to be doing a simple disk speed, Nova Bench, and Geek Bench, just, just to see the numbers. Um, keep in mind that the numbers you guys are going to see in the clips are going to be with ScreenFlow running, and at the end, I will, I will show you the actual numbers without ScreenFlow running so you guys get an idea because ScreenFlow does affect the numbers a little bit. All right, guys, let's get started. Let's check out the numbers. guys um you guys made it this far now i'm not going to go over the the actual specs because you guys can see them in the screen but i will say that i'm very impressed with this mac mini 2.7 gigahertz one of the key differences between this one and 
the the basic um, Mac Mini is that this one has an, a discrete card, and that discrete card actually helps out. Most people would think that, oh, well, since I'm not playing games, I don't need the di discrete card, but you actually do because the operating system Mac OS X is very um, graphic intense, so just having a video card will help out the system a lot. Um, just playing around with Final Cut Pro, when I used to have my old MacBook that would have the 9400M, it would just not, it would lag with transitions. It would lag just looking for a title in the Final Cut Pro menu. It, it would render everything out perfectly, but it would lag. So for this reason, if you're doing any video editing or Photoshop, I strongly recommend the high-end Mac Mini over the Mac Mini server. Even though the Mac Mini server does have four um, cores, you do not have a discrete card, so the system is going to be bogged down if you're running any program that run that has any graphic intense applications in it. So, I think that the Mac Mini 2.7 gigahertz, the high end one, the non-server is the best choice for personal use because it would be the most balanced computer, and you can max it out to eight gigs. In fact, you can actually push it to sixteen gigs. Not only that, you can even install a second hard drive, even put an SSD. So the options are there. Um, Again, guys, I will be posting another video with my full review on the Mac Mini. Um, for now, this is just a performance test. All right, guys? Well, I'll catch you guys later.